Hey everyone, it's Hannah with the Heart Foundation. Today I am so excited because we are going live with Vanessa Rosetto. Vanessa is a registered dietitian and she was recently featured in Bon Appetit magazine. I am so excited to talk with her all about nutrition, um, the unbalance between nutrition information in the United States. I'm so excited to talk to her about all of it. As you guys know, February is American Heart Month, so we are really hitting home on really hitting it hard on trying to spread as much awareness as possible about the importance of heart health and about the prevalence of heart disease in the United States, which is the number one cause of death for both women and men in the United States. So February is American Heart Month, so we are totally bringing you guys as much content as possible. We have some lives happening. We talked, we're talking today with Vanessa. We spoke with Paul Stanley. We have some other exciting lives happening coming up in the next couple weeks. We did some live workouts with Nikki from Nikki Fitness. So don't you worry. We are going to be spending tons of time bringing you guys as much content as possible. For over 20 years, let me tell you a little bit about who I am. For over 20 years, the Heart Foundation has been advocating for the education, early detection, and prevention of heart disease. We do so by spreading awareness, like what we're doing here today. And then we also are very proud to support groundbreaking research happening at Cedar sinai under the direction of world-renowned cardiologist, Dr. P.K. Shaw. Cedars is one of the top three cardiology hospitals in the country, so we are so proud to work with them and to be on their team and help them spread awareness about the number one cause of death for both men and women. Vanessa has just joined us. We are gonna bring her in. Vanessa, how are you? Hi, how are you? I am doing so well. Thank you so much for joining me on here. Oh my God, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So are you in New York? Yeah, well, I'm in Hoboken, but I pretend it's New York. Well, you're on the East Coast. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh! Thank you so much for jumping on here. Um, first of, of all, I'm Hannah. We've been emailing. Nice to meet but you. It's yeah. So great to see you face to face. I feel like we're friends. <laughs> I know, right? Like I have your your headshot up on my desktop. I'm like there she you're is. So nice. Oh, you're so <laughs> nice. You're so nice. Um, I do have to tell you, congratulations on the incredible write up in Bon Appetit. Thanks. It's really wild. It's actually the first time a dietitian has ever been featured in the magazine. So I feel cool. like you have to like brush your shoulders off with that. It's so <laughs> cool. It's really wild. Yeah, it's been good. It's been um, it's been good. I, I actually the other day, somebody from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics actually called me and they wanted to talk about ways to make some actionable change. So that was very cool. I that mean, made me really happy. Yeah, that's exactly what what your point was in here was that there are problems, things need to be changed. And you, you, you said it very eloquently that it needs to happen and it's not happening. So right. that's so fantastic that some change yeah. is on the way. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. So I feel good about that. That was really good. That's so great. So great. can you so tell everyone who's watching or who's going to be watching this in the future, who you are and what is a dietitian? I know people don't know what a dietitian does, or I think they think that we tell them all the time, like, no, and the things that they can't be doing. Um, but my name is Vanessa Rosetto. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm also the dietetic internship director at New York University. And I also have a private practice called Kalina Health that I founded with one of my co-founders, um, uh, Tamar Samuels, who's amazing and about to have a baby any minute. Uh, and a registered dietitian really can help you with like preventive care, right? So like, and people don't realize that they just like come in. Even today I had a woman and she was like, I eat White Castle and I, you know, I do these things. And she was like, her arms were like crossed. And I was like, okay, listen, we, I have to work with you. Like you want to be a vegan, but I right. don't want to prepare your food. And like, let me give you actionable tools so that you can make change and be successful. And so if, if a registered dietitian is working with you and they actually know what they're doing, that's what they're going to do. I mean, you can't eat and drink all the things all the time, but right. I like, I like to say you have 35 chances a week to achieve your goal. Right. So if you could do it 32 times, you should be like, well, on your way there. Did you always know that this was like the field you wanted to work in? Were you passionate about health and nutrition at a young age? 
No, I was actually like interested in being a, a physician, but I partied really hard in college with my friends and, <laughs> and decided to study history instead because that was the easiest way for me to get the best GPA in the event that I wanted to go to grad school. <laughs> okay, easiest way? I struggled in history. That was probably my worst grade in college. <laughs> it was so funny. I, then I realized I was reading like a thousand pages a week and writing papers all the time. And I was like, yeah. oh man, that was probably not the smartest thing. Um, but I did do well. And then I got a master's in marketing actually from NYU. But I always was very interested in science. And I had gone to a, a dietitian, a registered dietitian, and she helped me and I really liked it. And I thought like, oh, wow, like I could do scientific things, but not be a doctor. So that seems pretty cool. Right. Totally. Yeah. So wait, did you, so you, why, what made you go to a dietitian in the first place? In college? Well, I was always thin my whole life. I tell people this all the time that like my mother and father never policed what we ate. We could drink like two liter bottles of soda. They did not care. It was like the late eighties, early nineties. It was, it was fine. As long as we got A's in school, that's like all they cared about. Um, my mom wasn't someone like a mom who was always weighing herself. We bear, we didn't have a scale in the house. So that wasn't a thing on my mind. And then I got to college and my roommate from college made me mac and cheese in a like a, a hot plate. I think that's like still like illegal because you could like burn the dorm down. Burn the whole building down. <laughs> yeah, so like not cool. <laughs> and um, and then I just started eating like really processed food, right? But like, but before that, I hadn't been because my mom was really making all my all my meals. So even though like yes, I could drink soda and yes, I could have McDonald's. That wasn't like the normal thing in my house. It was mm -hmm. always like fresh foods. Um, and so then I gained a lot of weight in college. And then after college, I lost weight because I moved back home and I wasn't eating Sparrow pizza and like drinking, you know, a six pack of Pepsi every three days. Right. Uh, so, but then I was like, wait, I lost all this weight and I don't really know exactly how I did it. So let me go to a dietitian and that person will explain it to me. And so she did. Um, her name is Carrie Glassman. We're friends now to this day. She's like amazing and such a um, awesome person. And I thought like, wow, this woman like really helped me and taught me about food. And that was so cool. And I want to do that for other people. So like, let me start to learn. So I took some classes at NYU and here I am. Boom. Yeah. That is so great because it's, it's so true going back to processed food versus what your mom cooked. I bet they both felt equally as satisfying to eat. Or probably your mom's even more. Maybe oh, so the good. maybe the fast food felt satisfying in a different way because it was something that had been like it was a treat. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Exactly. But, but it's so interesting that they were probably equally as satisfying, but one was bringing you um, so many benefits and the other was hindering your health. Yeah. I talk about this too. Like, so my mom's from Haiti. So a lot, my mom is like this really great cook. And now that I'm an adult with children and mm. I can't cook as well as my mom. We go there every Sunday and she makes food for us. And then we bring it home. It's like, that's the thing that we do. Like my kids are like, are we going to Yaya's house for the real food? And we're like, yeah. Yaya. <laughs> yeah, they call her Yaya. <laughs> and so, um, so, you know, she, there was always rice and beans. There was always fresh like vegetables. We always had fruit. There was always a protein. Like, so my meals were just like, perfectly balanced and you know right. being a kid being a teenager I think like college students or kids and you have autonomy then it's like well I can eat this sandwich and I could eat this pizza and I could I can just basically do whatever I want mm -hmm. recklessly and so I kind of blame my parents a little bit because they never discussed food like it was great they food wasn't a big thing we had food it nourished our bodies that was great but they never like really explained to me like you should eat why yeah right <laughs> like, totally so I, was like, I was like i don't know I'm just gonna no like i came from the exact opposite end of the spectrum as that where i grew up knowing that i had heart disease in my family and so my parents were it was very important to them that we understand why we eat certain things or why we stay away from certain things or things in moderation all that type of stuff but as a kid I didn't care about that. I didn't want to hear about that. I felt gypped that I couldn't, you know, have fast food or I couldn't yeah. have, I, I remember begging my mom. I told her I would, I would pay for it with my allowance if she would let me go pick up KFC. She was like, <laughs> what? And I used to get so upset because I would get a single Oreo in my lunch with a piece of fruit as my dessert. And it was so like, bad. I want, I want the four double stuff Oreos that my friend is having over there. I didn't yeah. understand it. So it was, even though, even though my parents explained it to me, I was a kid. 
and it, yeah. and I felt gypped. And so I, I probably ended up approaching food the exact same way that you did because it was exciting. Food's delicious. It's fun. It's yeah. And also you wanted control, right? Yes. Like whenever the parents are like, my eight year old only eats French fries. I'm like, yeah, stop talking about it. He'll stop and just offer the vegetable every day, every day, every day. And eventually the kid's going to eat the vegetable. And sometimes you have to have like draw a, a line in the sand. That's not really easy, right? Like my son is really funny about food. I mean, he only started eating protein like last week. I'm serious. Let me be like, just eat the chicken. Can you eat a bean? He'd be like, no, rice, take mm. the beans out. Like, it's a whole thing. Oh my gosh, now we're like a, a, a bread basket kid? That was totally Yeah, and, and we're like, enough. So now we're like, <laughs> you have to have three carrots at lunch and three carrots at dinner. And he's like, oh, okay, bye. And it's like, <laughs> so, you know, some, and now he's like, okay, I like the carrots. And he just knows. And we like cut the carrots, the vegetables up in like a container. And he goes into the fridge and he like gets it out. And so now yes. he's in control. Um, so the more control you give them, I feel the better the choices that they can make. So just like arming them and making them understand like fiber is good for your body. Like, you know, we want different colors, like orange does this and red does that. And so then they ask like more questions about it and they can get it that when they, you know, go away to college and I'm not making all their meals, they'll right. know to pick up a carrot or two, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, you're totally giving, you're arming them with knowledge at such a young age. Yeah, yeah, we, it's like important because like, yeah, and, and we let them eat all the candy they want. So, you know, on Halloween, I let my kids eat all the candy they want and then they probably don't touch it again at all. Like I end up throwing it out. They, maybe yes. they'll ask like, because they, they don't care. It's always there. Like they can always have a dessert every night. So it's not this taboo type of thing. And I think that that's what's really important, right? Is that when you are arming your children with these, life skills they're not going to be these adults that only eat three things and none of them are vegetables or fruits and so like while I can get behind like intuitive eating and all these things for some people it's not in they never find a taste for eating these kinds of things right eating mm -hmm. vegetables and eating fruits so we sometimes we have to guide people towards that and normalize eating these things every day so they just know like I know I have to eat this. I know that it's good for my body. And I ha I can find the thing that I like. Ways. Right. Right. It's right. Just because you don't like broccoli. Like steamed broccoli is not the only way to eat broccoli. Correct. Like boiled. Like my husband talks about. Oh, my mom just logged on. That's so funny. <laughs> Yaya's on. Yaya's here. <laughs> yeah, Yaya's here. <laughs> um, my husband talks about how his mom used to just like boil all the vegetables so that yeah. they were like really gross where like my mom would put like you know everything has like spice and flavor not salt though but it's like onion powder garlic powder olive oil like garlic like roast it and then roast yeah, it yeah she would like herb but, it up a little yeah sure. like you need herbs and I think and I talk, it's so funny because I talk like that about that with my own patients I'll say like mm -hmm. So like, I don't like Brussels sprouts. I'm like, oh, well, you could do balsamic and a little maple syrup, and then you roast it. And their eyes, like, light up. They, like, can't believe this is a thing. Yeah. Well, and then cooking, they get into it. Cooking and making your own food can feel so intimidating because there, there are no limits. You can do whatever you want. And I'm sure for someone who is coming to a dietitian, specifically trying to, like, get a better understanding of their health, make healthier decisions for themselves, it can feel so overwhelming to where they think, there are a million ingredients and how do I know which things are good, which things are bad? How do I know the things that I'm supposed to be doing versus not how much maple syrup is too much or how, how do I know if I like cayenne or something? So it's got to yeah. feel overwhelming for people. Yeah. But I always tell people like, look, what's the worst thing that can happen? You don't like it. I'm like, okay, then maybe we throw it out or maybe you doctor it up a little bit. Hot sauce saves the world. So it we does. try to like, does makes everything better. Um, but I just tell people like, don't be afraid to try. And also like, especially if you do have like heart disease, I talk about heart disease with everybody and their eyes mm -hmm. are like always really wide. Cause someone will come in and they'll be like, well, I don't eat any meat, but my cholesterol is through the roof. I'm like, that's because you mm -hmm. overeat carbohydrates. And they're like, what? <laughs> and they so don't I'm like, hey, like you, they don't understand that like carbohydrate tells the liver make calories and store fat and so you need to you need to stabilize blood sugar you need to pair you know protein fat and carbohydrate together so that you have this rolling hill and not these peaks and valleys and so that sort of like sparks someone's interest right because then they're like oh, okay well how do I do that? I'm like, right, when you eat an apple, that's great. It has fiber and that's good for you. But how are you going to slow down that digestion? That's why people add peanut butter. That's why people add nuts. 
Also, it helps to keep you full. Fiber draws cholesterol away from the body. Most people don't get enough fiber. How can you get the 25, 35, 40 grams of fiber that's recommended? Like here are actionable ways to do it. And here are little tricks like, oh, you like oatmeal? Great. Add two tablespoons of chia in your oatmeal and add raspberries and a teaspoon of peanut butter. You're at like 18 grams of fiber for the day. They're like, whoa. And it's far more delicious than eating the plain oatmeal. So delicious. And also far more delicious than having the packet that's like maple brown sugar. I'm like, that's not even <laughs> good. That's not good. And then, oh but then when God. they eat, when they eat it the way that I told them, they're like, oh my gosh, you're a genius. I'm like, I'm not even, yeah. but okay. Like, so simple no, things like that. These are pieces of knowledge that, I mean, you're, you're dropping bombs on me right now. Totally. With, Anytime, with just call me. how to, your, your body is a machine and it needs, there are specific requirements for things to be broken down a certain way. Yeah. And so that's so interesting to me that, that you're overloading on carbohydrates. And so your body is producing more cholesterol. Yeah. That, that's huge because I would think, you know, a lot of people think they're vegetarian or they're vegan. So they've got to be healthy. Right. And or so, so or, and like, that is the answer to all, all things, heart disease. Like, no, you still need to pay attention to what that means. What are those foods that are putting into your body and where is that balance? It's called a balanced diet for a reason. Right. And then people don't understand just to your point, like, oh, I'm vegan. And so I eat beans all day. And so I can eat as much of them as I want and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. And you're like, well, yeah, beans are super healthy and that's no problem. And if you don't have a cholesterol problem and you don't care about your you don't have a weight goal then like mm -hmm. great but you can't eat all the beans because that's a starch so when people for example i always say like oh you had falafel and then you put it in a pita and your cholesterol is sky high it's gonna get higher because you just had double starch they're like it's protein i'm like no it's double starch and these right. are the reasons why and so that's why when people say like oh you can't tell people like the amounts of food to eat but like sometimes we have to tell people the amounts of food to eat because their life actually depends on it you know like when i have a client that comes in i have this one patient who god bless him does everything that i say because he didn't want to be on a statin and he's done everything and he eats really regimented and i'm like okay look we have the data and you need a statin he's like what i was like you you've done everything You've lost weight. You've done what you have to do. Like you can feel good when you go in and say, I've done every single thing I could do, but your calcium score is 51, carbonate score is 51, it should be zero. And yeah. so I think that that's like the importance of the dietitian, what people should know about us is that, you know, like I, we're clinically trained. Like I have a whole bunch of students that are in the hospitals and they're learning these kinds of things. So you can feel good going to someone, to a dietitian, and knowing that they're going to understand how to work with you and help you achieve your goals. Well, and my favorite thing so far, because I mean, you know, you and I emailed back and forth, but we've never spoken. We've never talked yeah. face to face. I yeah. had no idea. Like, like, oh my gosh, she's going to throw out some things that I am just, I don't have, I don't have the knowledge or I don't have no understanding the vocabulary. The way that you're talking to me, which I would assume is the way that you also talk to your patients. It's very this is so corny. It's very digestible. It's yeah. Very, like I yeah, yeah. Can totally understand every single thing that you're saying and it all makes sense. And while it's a lot of information, it's in layman's terms. And I think that yeah. that's a huge benefit of talking to a dietitian. It doesn't all seem foreign. It seems attainable and clear and easy to apply to everyday life. A hundred percent. And that's the thing. It's like, you're working in the hospital for 1200 hours talking to so many different patients. Like I've had celebrity clients mm -hmm. and I've had the person with really low health literacy and everybody in between. I've had people who are there because their you know, spouse makes them go and people who are there because they want to be there. I mm -hmm. always talk about, I had this one client, he was from Italy. His wife called for him and like translated. He was a shift worker. He was like not interested. And that guy has almost <laughs> 60 pounds. And he's always like, Vanessa, you're such a good girl. Like, <laughs> Vanessa. Like, yeah. And like, but like when he first came, he's like, can I have my cookies? And I'm like, bro, you're not eating cookies for breakfast. Like, let's take it, scale it back. But what I, when I took something away, I gave him something. I was like, okay, well, how about we eat Will you eat a yogurt and put Nutella? And he's like, who are you? Yes. <laughs> so like, let's try to figure out how it's going to work for you. Right. So we made it work. And nice. that's what, that is the whole thing. You have to be relatable to your clients. You have to make people feel seen and heard. So 
that's the point of my article, right? Like, it doesn't matter Absolutely. what color someone is. Like, not everybody's going to be a lawyer and a doctor and own a hedge fund and come with tons of money and be, you know, celebrities. Like, that, you have to talk to all of them the same. And so my celebrity clients get the same care as the regular people that come in, right? Because right. to me, my job as a practitioner needs to be that I'm taking care of you 100%. Absolutely. Especially since, you know, we, you talked about this a little bit is we look at statistics. We look at numbers. Those are based on normal everyday people like you and me, not yep. on the celebrities, not necessarily on the people who have the, the millions and millions and millions of dollars who can afford um, health insurance, who can afford yeah. to, to gain the knowledge that it takes to live a quote unquote healthy lifestyle. And so those are the normal people that make up those statistics. So it's incredibly important that people, that, that, that we treat everyone on that same level. Because you're right, there is a total unbalance in nutrition education. Yeah. Some people get it, but some people do not at all. At yeah. all. Ex and also like the attainability, like you were saying before, like mm -hmm. you, we can't be practitioners that are charging people a thousand dollars a session. So what does that mean that only people with a ton of money can get, can be healthy. And then the rest of us are relegated to like disease. <laughs> it can't no, be, right? Totally. And, and so there needs to be something in the middle. And we have to, as, as practitioners, as clinicians, as people who mm -hmm. are in the helping profession, make sure that we're helping people as best as we can. But also like, I, I'm also like a firm believer, like if I have a patient who comes in and they're like not interested, I'm like, okay, you're not interested. You're not gonna make any change. So I'm not gonna waste your time and you're not gonna waste my time. Call me when you're ready. Yeah, that's it, right? Like you have to, you have to do the work too because I can't be over here on the island doing all the work on my own. That's one of the things I say all the time is number one rule in my opinion, advocate for your own health. And if yeah. you're not there yet, you're not there yet, but you are the one who's going to be able to make the change. That's right. That's right. My own father doesn't listen to me. He does not listen. My father, my father has, has reflux and he's like, I'm going to go to the doctor. I like that. This is what you got to do. I was like, and I'll put you with one of the girls that works for me. And he's like, why can't I work with you? I was like, because you won't behave with me, but you'll behave with right. one of the girls that works for me. And then he was like, I'm going to talk to my doctor. I'm like, do you tell your doctor that your daughter's a dietitian? He's like, I haven't. I'm like, try that. And let me see what, let me know what he says to you. Yeah. <laughs> so even my own father is, you know, not in the stage of change, but I say that to say this, people vacillate in their readiness to change, right? We're, we're in action or contemplative and we go back and forth a lot because mm -hmm. you always have to be doing the work that is like whatever it is that you are right if you are somebody who loves to over shop if you're somebody who's an alcoholic if you're somebody who is overeating and then you want to stop all of those things work has to be done mm. it's not yeah glamorous. It's, it's easy to think that you can just turn the faucet off but you can't you can't you need, you can't. You need help yeah you need help need help. I like that a lot. You always have to do the work. I'm yeah, stealing I'm, that. Steal it. I'm, I'm always doing work. I'm doing work every single day. And I, right. I had a, I had a woman be like, I want to be like you. Like every time I see pie, I, I want to eat the pie and I don't want to eat the pie. And I was like, well, I don't really like pie, but like, I like cookies. I like, there you ice go. Cream. like, I like, I like those kinds of things. And her face, she was like, wait, you like, Desserts? I'm like, oh, I'm a human being. I like desserts. Yes, desserts are delicious. So, you know, you just have to make it like relatable. And when she saw that, I was like, yeah, just eat the food. You have, but like you, if your goal is 10 pounds down, then cookies and wine is not every day. That's, that's true. And, goal, I, that's and I think a lot food. of people also approach these kind of on these foods that we shouldn't like she was talking about pie they approach it as if they have a little they lose they've lost they've they've totally ruined that day that day is a wash or whatever when in reality it's like okay if you have a piece of pie that's cool but you don't need to eat the whole pie and you don't you know what i mean right. you don't need to punish right. yourself for it be aware that you really really wanted it and you allowed yourself to have a little bit but now just like you were saying earlier you ate that apple but you need a little bit of peanut butter with it or something it's like you ate that pie yeah so now what do you have to do to balance out the fact that you ate the pie well not even really that per se it's like every meal is a chance to do better if i'm having the pie right. with you like i'm coming to la and we're having pie and we're having a good time well that's what i wanted to do i don't necessarily yes. have to do anything to make it up but i have to think like 
if I'm going to be depressed about it and beat myself up about it, then I probably shouldn't be, I shouldn't eat it because, because of how it's going to make me feel. It's not right. Worth it. It's not mm -hmm. worth that for like my mental state basically. Mm -hmm. But also if my goal is something like weight loss or whatever, I can have the pie, but I probably just can't have the pie every day. If my goal is just to be happy and have a better relationship with food and eating the pie every day is something that works for me too. Well then have at it. I think that like, everybody's like working in all these absolutes and nobody's mm -hmm. in the middle. And also everybody's like against science. And it, there's just, I think we've gone so far out and we need to like, just everybody come back in. <laughs> Let well, also live. too, I think that we all need to remember every single one of us is living in the gray area. Yeah, Every exactly. single one of us, there yeah. is no clear cut answer for any one of us. We are all on this like sliding spectrum of figuring it all out. That's right. That's right. So be kind with everybody. Mm -hmm. Let people live. Meet people where they are. I like that. You want to eat the pie? I want chocolate pie. I don't like apple pie. It's all, like a whole thing. But you know, like I might, like, guys. Like, let's just make it work for you. Let's totally. make it work. Yeah. So I do have a question about something yeah. that you stated in the article. You talked specifically about a couple that you were working with, and about how they'd worked with this white dietitian who just like wasn't getting it. And then you were able to help them out in a whole new way. Can you explain a little bit what that was like? And can you explain how your approach might have been different from their previous dietitian? Yeah, it wasn't the dietitian. It was their physician. And so, okay. and so that physician, listen, if you have type 2 diabetes and your A1C is 13, I think that I feel your physician's job is to work to get your A1C down. Point blank, period, end of story. That is good patient care. What is it? It's oh, it's the amount of glucose in your blood over three months, right? And so we don't have diabetes, so we are below five point seven. And okay. so like five point seven to six point three is considered pre diabetic and everything over six point three is in its diabetes type two or type one, just depending. But type okay. one is usually autoimmune, right? So he so Harold Mooch, he likes to be called, had type two has type two diabetes. And he was trying he and his wife were going to the doctor it was years and nothing was changing so where are you as the practitioner to say let's do another approach but he was they were really dismissed and so here's the thing I've worked with a lot of physicians a lot of smart physicians a lot of caring physicians I've worked in the hospital I know what it's like to be grinding seeing your patients every single day and seeing patients who are non-compliant we don't like to use that term anymore but patients that just are not going to do anything that you are telling them to do you know them they walk in you see them from a mile away and you got you have to pivot and approach them in a different way fine but these people are present they are excited they are enthusiastic they do every single thing i tell them to do always they meet me over the halfway mark. <laughs> they are just, they're there. So when they first met me, they were like, we are at our wits end. We don't feel heard by our practitioner. We don't know what to do. So, so I was like, you need a new practitioner. I'm sending you to an endocrinologist, first of all. So they got great care from a white endocrinologist who saw his patient as a human being. <laughs> so it's not about the color of your skin. It's about your cultural competence. There it and is. They just, and they just came to me and I just talked them off the ledge. Like, you don't need to be vegan to be healthy. You need to follow steps like this. this these are the actions that we can take so let's do some small changes that, that we know you can be successful at and then mm -hmm. build on those every single week so every single week we built on them we built on them we built on them and now he his a1c is 6.3 he lost 29 pounds his wife by default lost 10 pounds they're doing great and it was really simple as just identifying what these people wanted to do they they were very engaged and interested in their own health and they wanted to make changes and they just didn't know how so, so what was the issue they, they they told me they were like we come to you with the same energy that we came to our last physician our physician so we're not sure and so i can't badmouth someone that i don't right. know i would never do right. that i you know i but I've been working with you for a while and nothing's changing. Like yeah. his numbers weren't going down. He was always hanging out around in the 200s, but really you should be like, you know, 90 to 100. And I, I saw the medication he was on. I was like, that's not the right medication. And they were like, well, our doctor said, I was like, it's the wrong medication. You need to get <laughs> new meds. And I'm not a doctor, but I knew that that wasn't the right medication for him. So, you know, look, 
your primary care physician, you need to see at least 90 to 100 patients a day to pay your rent. Things are tough. It's hard. But when someone is actively wanting help, it's your job to help them. I, so I, I don't know what it is. I don't know that I'm the most amazing practitioner out there, but I do. It is really important to me that people have success. Well, I think you, you just said it. You said treated them as an individual, as a real person, yeah. not just, uh, and that's gotta be, I cannot imagine being a doctor and, and having to do that with 90 to hundred patients a day. That's gotta be draining. And yeah. not to mention, it's an incredible amount of information that you're having to process. And as so many different cases and circumstances, everything, it's gotta be a lot, but, totally. but to our point that we were stating earlier, that's just all more the reason that you have to advocate for your own health. You have to be the one to make some noise. You yeah. have to be the one to say, no, 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 no. Something still isn't right. You know, in my internship, I was, <laughs> I was on the, in the ICU and like all the bells and the whistles are going off. Mm -hmm. And doctor said, uh, um, I said, do you know what's wrong with the patient? He was like, no, we're just really practicing medicine. And I was like, whoa, you're just like, I was like, like that, like really hit me in the face. Like I was like, yeah. wow. And he was like, yeah, like we have theory. He was like, just like you're a dietitian, you learn stuff in school and then you have people that you counsel. And so you're going to go to like the first line of defense that you know works. And then if that doesn't work, you'll go to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And I was like, wow, that was so eye opening. So yeah, these are great, amazing, world renowned doctors. They're awesome, but they don't know yeah. everything. And so that doesn't mean you're going to walk in there and start like dictating to your physician exactly how things have to go, but mm -hmm. it can be a collaborative experience. <laughs> and you don't have, if something makes you feel uncomfortable, you're free to go and speak to somebody else and you're free to go and get the care that you deserve. I feel very fortunate to be friends with all my doctors. Like actually one of them texted me before because he's having GI issues and I'm like, I gotta talk to you later. But like, <laughs> so, so, you know, I can text my doctors. They text me back and they care about me. And I, I have this like superpower where I know all the doctors in New York city and people message me and then I get them appointments and everybody's well taken care of. I feel really fortunate for that. Because yeah. I am getting good care and so are my friends and so are my, and so is my family. Not everybody else is that lucky. Also, I have high health literacy. So <laughs> but I was going to say, but also Vanessa, can we give you like a little pat on the back right now? Because that is an incredible, incredible thing that you do is to be able to help all of these people. And exactly what you just said, incredible health literacy. You have such a deep and brilliant understanding. And then you also have this very, Again, only talking to you for 25 minutes now. You have this very, very human approachable energy that is just so lovely that doesn't, I think a lot of people, there's a stereotype to where that's not how people in the health world are. In, yeah. You know, in a hospital, you don't expect to be greeted with this type of energy. Yeah, I think I talk about this a lot is that uh, growing up as the daughter of immigrants, right? Like mm -hmm. when you're growing up as a black kid, everyone's telling you all the things that you can't do and all the things that you shouldn't be saying even though like I was the smartest kid or whatever like they're all the things that you shouldn't be doing you're not allowed to do you shouldn't be doing and so that kind of always stays with me so every time I see whoever I see I just want to make sure that they no one's telling them what they can't do and that they feel seen and that they feel heard and they feel like somebody cares about them it's so simple so even if I can't help you, because sometimes I can't help you. I don't know. Sometimes your, your problems are beyond food, guys. <laughs> like, you know how like people come to me first? They're like, yeah, I don't want to go to the doctor because I have all these things. And you're like, sis, you're like, you need a doctor. Listen, I'll listen to you. Tell me about it. But like, I don't know. <laughs> you need a doctor. You need a doctor. <laughs> so, so there's that. But like, people just want to feel heard and they, mm -hmm. want, they want true help and they want to feel like they did everything that they could and like they didn't leave anything on the table. So I always try to like work through that with people. Um, you know, and like, I am pretty personable. I like people. <laughs> so I like you this, totally are. I like this job. So do you, is there like a food that you, or a type of food that you feel very strongly that everybody should, no, regardless of who they are, everybody should either stay away from or absolutely eat this or pay attention to this or eat this way, a school of thought that you feel really I mean, strongly about? Y'all need water. Like, nobody, everybody's like, I don't like water. No I one drinks, my mom. I have to tell my mom to drink water. It's like, like lady. bizarre. <laughs> yeah, look, I'm like, guys, 
yes. So I that's know. like very weird to me. <laughs> like, and when people come into the office and they're like, I just don't like it. I'm like, it's just cold and wet. Like, add, add fruit. Add, a, add an electrolyte tablet. I don't know, but you need yeah. water to function. This is like basic. So everybody drink water. It's good for your skin. Also, everybody have like one piece of fruit a day. You could find one fruit. I literally don't care what fruit it is. So don't worry. If, if you want a banana, that's fine. Like do it. Just eat a piece of fruit. Um, sleep. If I was like sleep, if you guys could just sleep, it's helpful. Nobody does it anymore. Nobody sleeps. Also, I think everyone, you would all benefit from a magnesium tablet before bed. That might help you. It's going to help relax you and go to sleep. Nice. These are all good. good for your heart. Like, nice. Kind of yeah. See? Well, well, these are, <laughs> right? These are all very easy, again, attainable little changes yeah. that we can make throughout our day. Yes. That yes. Are, are good for us. Yes. Cheap. And like, you don't, like the best is when people come in and they're like, okay, so what supplements? I'm like, um, magnesium? Yeah. <laughs> maybe this d. one vitamin d you all need d everyone's d deficient not you because you're out west but uh, i know no here, but... so we're in trouble yeah d, right. get some vitamin d but i'm like you know just eat food dark leafy greens they're like that's it they're like we have a right. cabinet of supplements i'm like you should save your money save yeah that's another thing too is that people always like try to get these little quick fixes of bars or prepackaged meals or all these things when it's like in reality if you would just eat whole foods You'd be Maybe all right. Some things would clear them. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, and also, guys, like, you don't have to have organic vegetables and organic fruits all the time. Like, you can get frozen fruits and vegetables. They're right. They can ripen to like you mm -hmm. know they're allowed to ripen to peak. Then they flash freeze them. There's minimal processing. That way, you don't have a ton of waste. Like, you don't need to be spending a ton of money. You can eat healthy on a budget. It doesn't all have to be fancy and you know, twelve dollars a pound for chicken. Yeah. Like, we can make it work. I, I know. I, I swear my favorite way to eat is what do I have in my freezer, fridge, wherever, throw yeah. it in a bowl and obviously add a little hot sauce. And then exactly. Like, exactly. <laughs> we, got, we got truffle hot sauce. It's like, I'm eating it every day. I'm I've like, had I'm it. Like, so good. So good. I'm like, wait, what do we do when this runs out? My husband's like, where did you get it? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, it's COVID. I, 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 just, I go to supermarkets and just like wipe off the shelves. So it's everywhere. And it's, and it's like, there are different levels of it. One is like the everyday level, yeah. but there's one that's like thirty dollars a bottle or something. Oh I'm like, no! I'm like, I have listen, to... I'm not, I'm not on that level. No, I don't that need that. Felt like it probably. It's intense. Is so good. I'm it's sure it's delicious. Good. It's so delicious. Yeah. yeah, just an an egg and truffle hot sauce. Boom! Life changing. So delicious. I actually had that for lunch today. I had a sprouted so wheat good. tortilla with an egg and that. Truffle. So good. It's so good. I love that. I love it. Eggs never do me wrong. So if you had to boil down, speaking of getting on the egg, yeah. if you had to boil down your philosophy around nutrition to, to like one sentence, what do you think you would yeah. say about it? Just be kind to yourself. That's it. Just be kind to yourself. Done. Like, so there, much easier there's, said than done. Yeah, but like there's vegetables, you're gonna eat them. There's fruits, you're gonna eat them. Sometimes you're gonna eat a pizza and a cheeseburger and fries too and a milkshake. It's good. You're gonna live. <laughs> like, but you know, like there's a mental, like a global mental health crisis. So when people come in and they're like, I just eat cookies and ice cream every night. I'm like, okay, let's work on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's you, figure out why. Let's figure out why. I think that's the thing, right? People don't want, they are not introspective enough. So they just, they sit down, they guzzle the food, they don't think about it. And then, then they feel bad. There's so many reasons in, the, in life to feel bad about yourself. Like that's how humans are wired. Mm -hmm. So don't let food be a reason because you have to do that to live. You need it. You it need necessity. food. Yeah. So we gotta, we're going to have to fix that. But you know, it's okay. It's okay. We're all we're all with you. Like not people are not perfect, whatever mm -hmm. perfect means to you. And if they seem that way, it's probably not true. Oh, it's definitely not true. It's not true. It's not. Like J Lo has somebody that slaps the food out of her hand, I promise. <laughs> she's J Lo. <laughs> but also like my goodness, she's aged well. I mean, if I was rich like J-Lo, I wouldn't be afraid of 50 either. I'd be like, bring it on. 
Totally. Oh my gosh, that woman yeah. she just has her hair all snatched up. Yes. And it's like perfect. She's twenty two. Yep, she's perfect. Just oh like, my gosh. Yeah, we all aspire. <laughs> right? Yeah. The unreachable goal. Yeah. But like she, it's it's true. She has a chef. She doesn't right. eat rice. She doesn't drink alcohol. Like which is fine. That's her, that's what she wants to do. And that's totally mm -hmm. cool. But then you're out here trying to compare yourself to JLo, but you don't have JLo money. Stop. <laughs> do your own thing. Do your own thing. Stay in your lane. That's my philosophy. Stay in Ooh. your lane. Ooh. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Do the work. Yeah. Be kind to yourself. 100%. Wow. I'm going to get those like on a yeah. t-shirt or something. I'll make them for you. We're friends now. I'm going to send you things. Don't worry. <laughs> send it all to me. I'll send it all. Don't worry. I am so grateful that you joined me on here today, Vanessa. Thank you so much. Again, I mean, all the congratulations to you. I'm I hope so that you are just getting so much love and so much attention for all the work. Thank you. Doing. And, and thank I'm you for all that you do. It's so good. You bring oh awareness gosh. and it's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really excited that you are, that you got a phone call and you're seeing some change with some things. That's so fantastic. Yeah. And again, thank you so much for helping us to spread awareness because that is where the change starts is just by educating people. So oh, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. And I just have to say at the Heart Foundation, while we know that you can be affected by heart disease at any age, we believe that you're never too young and it's never too late to start living heart healthy. So that's how I end every live is just by reminding you that. Thank you so much for joining me, Vanessa. Thank I really, you. really appreciate you. And I will talk to you soon. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk soon. Bye. Absolutely. Bye.